Hello, everyone, and welcome to Gergen Muxel, a podcast that seeks to explore the unexplored topics in games, how they work, why they work, and why we love them. I'm Muxel. I'm Gerg. And what's our we... little what's our little ditty? Yeah, you, that's it, right? That's the ditty now. Yeah, that's it. Huh? We're gonna replace yeah, that with we the... should, with yeah whatever we do have. <laughs> I just so really look listen. forward to that next episode. Yeah. <laughs> We anyway, actually threw that around. Do you remember that? What? Doing, uh, doing, doing our own little voice? Yeah. No, not, no, not with like another no voice. <laughs> I don't think that would have got. No, like trying to f- me doing something, putting together some little musical ditty. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, Craig's far more musical than I am, so. Yeah, that's true. So, but no, I don't think far more musical. Slightly more musical than I'm I am. I'm more musical. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. In the same way that you're more computer. We are. <laughs> that's not a small amount. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Far more musical. Um, So today we're going to talk about fighting games, and we're going to talk about... (laughs) uh, What? There's a bizarre... (laughs) Um, bizarre. Okay. Okay. So we're going to talk about games as, like, spectacle, too, right? So there's a lot of... uh, Fighting games, I think, uniquely attract a large audience of people to watch them. Um, Evo, obviously, being, like, the biggest fighting tournament, and there's massive crowds of people that show up every year for that. Yeah. Um, in spite of there being, like, very different games a lot of years. Um, yeah, and the other thing is, fighting games are just so... It's just intuitively natural to watch someone, a pair of people play, right? Because that's, that is literally a 1v1. Like, it's not a team-based thing, which has come to prominence, which is very hard to spectate in a lot of ways, actually. You know, yeah. they never really... I, don't, I would maintain, I don't know... Uh, that they never quite figured out how best to show Overwatch or MOBAs. Yeah. Um, that's certainly not with the level of depth that would be required for every individual player in terms of how complicated what people are doing is. Mm-hmm. Um, or, or RTSs is very difficult, too. That's a little bit easier in 1v1s. But um, anything with just a whole lot of... In a fighting game, everything that you see, there's one screen, and everything you need to see is on the screen at all times. Yeah. So everyone can watch it perfectly. You don't miss anything. Nope, ever. Uh, and usually there's actually a minimal UI, too, in fighting games. Mm-hmm. Um, usually there's only uh, health bars and then some secondary resource uh, that the game will utilize. Um, so that's that's those, that's those the really... And, and, of course, just fighting games look cool, too. Like, there's just something very simple and, and, and uh, elemental about watching people fight each other. You know, like, that's like a gladiatorial... A humans have been doing that forever, so now we're just not watching real people do it, but, you know, virtual ver- versions do it. So that's just, like, there's a level of weird... Uh, entertainment there, I think, uh, that lends itself well to the uh, male demographic of gamers, I would, I would say, without sure. generalizing too heavily. Um, but, all the same, um, there's also things about fighting games that make them almost uniquely bad for a spectator sport. Yeah, so that's uh, in very interesting. Ways. Like, there's, it, when you talk about, like, trying to spectate an RTS or, like, an FPS, like mm-hmm. Overwatch, mm-hmm. Uh, especially a team-based one, right. um, there's so much happening in different parts of the game, you're going to miss stuff just because the scale of what's happening is, like, bigger than what you can comprehend yeah. as, like, one person. Yeah, you need more Because there's ten different people who are all making very specific inputs and doing very, like, Complex. nuanced yeah. things. Yeah. And you just, it's hard enough for one person to do that at a high level. Right. That's why it's hard to be a professional gamer in any of these. Right. Exactly. So to comprehend what ten of them are doing at the same time, is impossible. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. The fullness of what every player is doing. You can't. You can't. There's just not. You can't do that. Yeah, you're not going to understand that. We don't have a way to communicate that much information. But with a fighting <laughs> game, there are other ways to miss what's going on. Right. Which and this is go watch any high level competitive fighting game uh, and then try to without without knowing the game and or anything about fighting games and and then try to explain who is better and why mm-hmm. and you will fail miserably. Right. Uh, this is this has been like a long standing. Uh, thing I've really enjoyed um, is has been kind of learning a whole new type. I didn't play fighting games at all growing up, um, other than then the odd Marvel vs. Capcom in the arcade, you know. Mm-hmm. And one weird one where you had like a, it was a 3D fighter where you could turn to an animal form. Remember that one? Animorphs. It was Animorphs in the video game. I think it was yeah, Animorphs. Yeah, it was Animorphs. Anyway, um, I didn't have any background in this, and uh, jumping into a game that you don't know is, I mean, this is this is true of MOBAs as well. Um, Mopus, I think, have a very high level of having to understand. I will say Overwatch actually did a decent job of this, mm-hmm. which is each you know hero has one or two abilities. It's actually pretty uh, clear what each hero's identity is just by watching a little bit. You know, that was one thing that the designers of Blizzard do so well between the sound design and the animations and the character models. Because mm-hmm. you look at Tracer, and you pretty quick have an idea of what she's going to be. Reinhardt, 
uh, Roadhog, all that jazz. Mm -hmm. um, and in a fighting game, you have uh, a stupid amount of, of um, nuance to the point where I was actually shocked when I first, I thought I was like reading something wrong. Most of the time when you look at fighting games in depth, you'll eventually get into frame data, which is literally the amount of frames it takes um, for something to happen, be that an attack um, or a block or a move or mm -hmm. jump or a special move. And um, modern fighting games will have every single move, all of the frame data, like how many startup frames there are, how many active frames, how many cooldown frames, then on block or on hit. Um, and I remember literally seeing all this, and you know, so every single move, every single move in a fighting game will have like at least five numbers associated with it. And there's a plus or minus for most of them. So if you go through a move list, even in an NRS, uh, Netherroom Studios, and mm -hmm. Justice and Mortal Kombat, the studio that does those, even in those games, which are relatively simple in the uh, fighting game community, those are considered kind of like the like baby's first fighters. Mm -hmm. um, ironically, considering the brutal nature of it. Mm -hmm. Sure. But um, even those, there's just, there's one, there's usually dozens of characters for every fighting game, and there's dozens of moves, and then there's numbers associated with every single move. So the level of complexity is just insane. I remember being like, people are literally counting how many frames. Right. Um, for, I mean, how many moves would an average character have? Like... Oh, uh, I mean, God, at least a dozen special moves, which are multiple inputs by themselves, and then can be usually meter burned into a, a different type. So a, a move list might have, I mean, usually there's there's four. There's the normal standing buttons. Um, there's combos, which usually you'll have, like, I don't know, 20 to 25 combos. Mm -hmm. um, some of them will be elongated combos, so it'll be, like, a, like down, two, three, four... And then you could extend that with a back one, two after that. Okay. Um, so those would be two separate combos. But there you'd have like 20 plus of those. Mm -hmm. And you have however many special moves you have. Right. Um, and so, that's one character. So on the order of like 40 moves a character. Yeah, at least. And then you have dozens of characters. Yeah, so the minimum for a, a Netherrealm game would be 24. Okay. Uh, not counting DLC. With DLC, those would get up in towards the 30, mid 30s. So you're getting into like the thousands. When you're, when you're talking about, like, remembering all of this yeah. stuff. And not obviously not everybody who plays a fighting game remembers all of this stuff. But just to, to demonstrate, like, with this, the magnitude, anyway, yeah, the, the, the detail and the scale of what we're talking about data-wise. Absolutely. It's crazy. So in terms of watching stuff, decisions are made based on those numbers, too. Um, that is that's the crazy thing, is that having to have an understanding of, hey, that person did this because he knew that this move that was coming out from their opponent uh, was going to be unsafe, so that... Basically, there was a faster move he could do. Well, he, where if if player one is is getting attacked by player two, mm -hmm. player two is attacking, player one's blocking. If player two ends um, with a, an attack that has a lot of cooldown frames on it, mm -hmm. so the attack comes out, and then there's a long time between when the attack comes out and when the player has to can regain control of his character. Player one has a really fast attack that starts up really quick. Um, could then take what's called taking his turn. Um, would then be able to punish player two with an un with with a with a really fast poke and then lead him to a full combo. So it's a little stuff like that that a player would be able player one would have to be responding and reacting to the fact that he sees a string come out from player two in real time that would be unsafe and be able to then choose which of his moves within his character would be able to be appropriate to punish. Um, and that will happen, you know, literally like the the quickest moves tend to be six startup frames, which mm -hmm. is a tenth of a second. Okay. Right. 60 frame, 60 FPS. Yeah. So, like, what kind of a window are we talking about for making that decision? Um, for, yeah, so, well, it depends on the string. Like, this is this gets into some other stuff, like, um, like the ubiquitous, or <laughs> ubiquitous, ubiquitous term fuzzy guard, mm -hmm. um, which means different things in different uh, uh, games, but... And one of them, it refers to the idea of not knowing which way a string is going to go. Because sometimes you can see, say there's a string that goes uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. Right? Okay. You just press sure. each button in, in sequence. Um, and then at the end of that, you can either go press 1 again. So it could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. Or it could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 2. Okay. So you see 1, 2, 3 come out. You know probably 4 is going to come. Right. Right. Um, so you can anticipate that, but you don't know if one or two is going to follow up after that. Right. And say one is a an overhead attack and two is a low attack. As you see the one, two, three come out and you're blocking that, mm -hmm. you don't know how that string is going to end, right? right? So you have to guess. A fuzzy guard is, is in, in some games, um, the idea that you see that starting string come out. Um, and the again, this is really specific numeric design by the designers, that those last two, one or twos, mm -hmm. um, say the one that's a low comes out really fast, 
and the two that's an overhead would come out really slow. Right. So what you do to properly defend against that, because you don't know which one it's going to be. If you just block low, they could go overhead and you could caught by it. Mm -hmm. But if you block overhead, they could go low. So what you do is you block low initially because you know that could come out fast. And then within the time that you see during the string, so you block low, you see the low not come out, so you know that there's they're going to be going overhead because mm -hmm. the overhead takes longer, so you'll actually have the time to react. And this is the difference between like eight frames and like twenty frames. Right. So um, that's twelve frames, which is like a tenth of a two, second. Two tenths of a second. Two tenths of a second. Sure. Um, so the proper thing to do there, because you can't quite even react in that time period, is you would have this timing in your mind, which is blocking low and then immediately jumping up into the blocking uh, high for the overhead. Right. And at that point, you're not processing what's no, happening usually on the screen. You just know the timing of how to counter that exactly. set of moves. So that's either way, if he goes low, then you have been starting blocking low and you block that. And if he's going overhead, you'll have covered the potential that he went low, but you'll still have the time to get up into the high blocking position to, to counter the overhead. So if what was just described sounds complicated, it is. It's uh, very complicated. It, it doesn't... And it happens very quickly, obviously. We've been talking about like tenths of a second timing. Exactly, which is insane to think about. Um, so much less the level of, um, and like you said, that doesn't process quite in the same way that a musician who's playing, you know, 30 second notes isn't processing which finger to press down for each one of them. It's a combination of practice and then instinctual comfortability with your instrument that's going to be able to make you make the songs that you want it to be. Right. Similar so, with these kinds of timings, the players are really like, I mean, it, it sounds super, I, I mean, you're listening to a gaming podcast, so super nerdy shouldn't turn you off, but the level of, of precision and kind of like oneness these guys have with their controller is insane. Yeah. It's not, it's not so much as like you read an individual move, but in that you read a situation yes. and you respond with the right inputs. Right. So in that way, it is, it is Far more, I mean, fighting games have been described as like high-speed chess, which uh, I think is semi-appropriate in terms of the, like I, I just mentioned with that one really simple, and those are simple example that I was giving you, by the way, mm -hmm. um, really simple example of a string that could go either way, um, trying to, uh, like, so there's all of this level of technical, mechanical um expertise that can be that can be driven. And maybe this is why it's so fun to watch, because it has both. It has extreme mechanical um mastery that has to go into it that you have to get really good at. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing that will separate a good player from a, a great player, a professional player, is the idea of being able to outthink your opponent right. um, and be able to be one step ahead of them or to read a situation, like you said, mm -hmm. um, and be able to respond accordingly. We saw, for reference tonight, for in different ways, we watched uh, Dragon Ball Z Fighters uh, tournament for EVO 2018, Sonic Fox and uh, Goichi. Two of the best fighting game players, uh, certainly in recent times. And uh, there were multiple times where Sonic Fox, uh, particularly in his, spoiler, in his uh, the second set where he uh, ends up taking the entire tournament, yeah. um, made what appeared to be very simple decisions that turned out to, I mean, he literally won the tournament with a raw read. Yeah. Um, which refers to doing a super unsafe move or a super foolish move that would not work normally. But he did it and it worked because he had read ahead that he thought his opponent was going to... He thought that his opponent thought that he was going to do something. Right. And so he knew his opponent was going to respond to that one way. And so then he decided that he was going to do something else that would take mm -hmm. advantage of how he knew his opponent was going to respond. Right. Which is... I mean, that's... Right, that's... Yeah, I mean, that's what, that sounds like high-speed chess when you talk about it like that. Like, it's, being able to predict what your opponent is going to do and responding accordingly. Um, yeah, especially at those speeds, it's pretty crazy. But, like, if you're watching this as just, like, an audience member, and if you don't know any of this, like, would you say that fighting games are still fun to watch, even if you don't really know what's going on? So, yes and no. I'd say I can only really speak from my own experience in terms of having gotten into this in the a real people in the FGC would probably murder me, but the only reason I got into fighting games at all was because of Injustice, mm -hmm. uh, the original Injustice, that was way back in 2013 maybe, 2012. Um, I just love superheroes a ton, and Injustice, uh, one thing NetherRealm does really well is spectacle, and they added these crazy, ridiculous cinematic super moves to the game that mm -hmm. weren't just kind of like cool combos, but were cutscenes that would play if you connected, where Superman would... Chase people would, through the air. Right, punch you into the atmosphere. 
right. literally, and it would like zoom out and show the whole Earth, and you'd see yourself flying up, and Superman came, and then would hammer, you know, hammer fist you back down into the stage, mm -hmm. and then the game would keep on going. So stuff like, or, you know, Flash would run around the entire planet to like get a hyperspeed punch on you. Yeah. Stuff like that. Doomsday, you know, would literally punch you into the ground and through the Earth. Huh. Um, brilliant, like way over the top cool things like that. Right. So I remember literally just seeing a YouTube compilation of all the super moves. Oh, wow. Um, so we can cool. talk about super moves in a little bit because I think that's a good anecdote for even if super moves aren't utilized or too competitive, uh, they're flashy and they get people watching and they're really easy to put onto a screen and be like, that's cool, I want to do that. Yeah, no, totally. I think that yeah. that's a great argument for fighting games actually being really accessible from a spectator standpoint is yeah. because like the reason that people get in these games is that they look cool, yeah. right? Like, yeah. And there's a reason why you don't see fighting games that are just skinned as like Joe Schmo right. and he can fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. like superheroes, it's DBZ, it's Mortal Kombat characters which right. have been ninjas around forever and, and they're like, yeah. they're ninjas and they're like, you know, myth world, they're, yeah, they're like mythical fantastic, gods. you know, ninjas and warriors and yeah. they're not like normal people. Yeah, exactly. You don't, you don't Obviously, there are there's fighting games of like everything, so I'm sure there's like a Joe Schmo fighting game. But the ones that are popular tend to have a lot of spectacle to them. Close to one I could actually think of off the top of my head would be Tekken, which is funny because Tekken has a bunch of just normal dudes uh -huh. um, that have like some superpowers, but then they also have some of the weirdest shit, like yeah, it's true. <laughs> uh, like Yoshimitsu, who's like an undead samurai, uh, like contortionist. I don't even know how to put that together. Yeah, uh, he's very flexible. Yeah, very very <laughs> strange. Anyway, this is very strange. And like in one of them, you can literally play as a panda. Oh yeah, I remember that. That's pretty great. <laughs> uh, anyway, point is, um, yes, you are correct. So anyway, the spectacle of fighting games by themselves. So the question of like, are they fun to watch? Mm -hmm. um, I would say yeah. I mean, like to an extent, that's the reason I started. Right. It was like, hey, I like these characters. I think the big reason DBZF has been so successful has been because it's one, there have been many good Dragon Ball fighting games right. uh, for a long time. But two, but because and it's it's a really sound technical game and it's competitive. Mm -hmm. But two, because it literally we've gotten to the point like if you go watch the game, it looks like playing the cartoon. Like sometimes oh, yeah. it looks better than the cartoon. It's insane. Yeah, and it's so cool and so so cinematic. So in terms of like watching from a competitive stance, yeah, it, it will take a while to really understand what's going on, particularly if you're trying to do it alone. Um, but I think there's something like I said, just inherently cool. I think NetherRealm does a great job at nailing the superhero brawl kind of idea in, in Injustice with the way that there's stage interactions and things break around you as people are getting punched and there's all these crazy over-the-top hits. Yeah, that Mortal is Kombat cool. obviously lives and dies on its aesthetic. It's just stupidly brutal. People are getting, you know, knives through the face and going into x-rays, showing bone shattering right. just routinely in combat. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's actually an interesting like feature that they put into that game that doesn't actually get used too much competitively. Yeah. But it is really good for spectacle. If you just and especially if you're just like putting the hurt on somebody, yeah. you have their number yep. and it's yep. like, you know what, I'm gonna use Super this. Disrespectful. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's something that actually so that's that's one thing, uh, just as I've been watching the last year's worth of Injustice Two, um, because Mortal Kombat eleven got announced a couple weeks ago, which I'm super excited about. Um, so I've been rewatching a bunch of the getting up to down competitive Nether Realm scene, leading up to it. Um, and Justice Two is, is similar. Like I said, we'll get. I can just talk about Super News now, right? Sure. Uh, yeah, let's do it. In terms of uh, particularly for spectators, so Super News. I can only really speak to the Nether Realm games. For example, DBZF actually uses them a ton. So much. Which is another interesting point. Which it might be too so much. Mu yeah, um, maybe too much. Does eventually the breaks in combat begin to get? A little bit dull, or if you've seen an animation dozens and dozens and dozens, hundreds of times, it does it begin to lose a little bit of its specialness? Right, and it loses some. Of, like, so the game is so fast mm -hmm. that I think it, it's such a switch from the normal pace of combat yeah. to like then sit in and watch this animation. Yeah. If I did find that a little bit jarring, of like yeah. trying to keep up with every little move and like, oh, we got like five seconds where nothing's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When then we go, we go back to it, and that way it kind of reminded me a little bit. And this is the last time I'll make this like <laughs> this equivalence. But uh, Super Mario Aces, everyone had, like, their super move that they could use. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, it, and it was too much. Like, yeah, I, I don't yeah, think it, it was... Like a... I really enjoyed this N64 version of, yeah. of Super Mario Tennis. Yeah. Um, and the Game Boy version. And so yeah. I was really excited when they came out. Uh, I think it was the GameCube that was Aces. And all of the super moves just totally, like, threw off the game. Because yeah. it was just about getting the move and then burning it. And then you'd probably get a point, And then that was it. So that's an interesting conversation. So uh, the, going back to super moves for a second, particularly with MK11, they uh, have have taken an exact 
it seems like the, at least just again with the two examples of DBZF and now Mortal Kombat, they're shifting it towards something else because MK11 has gone done away with the the full super move okay. mechanic, um, and instead that you get it for it's not like a resource. It's just when you drop below thirty percent, it gets unlocked. Interesting. Um, you can only use it once. So that's a. I, I so want to come back to that because that's incentivizing like a, that's it a... to be used, and it'll show up a ton. I think. Huh. Um, and that's on top of fatalities, right? So fatalities are obviously after the match. Yeah. Um, but the fatal blow mechanic, which is just the super moves now, which will play a whole. It's the same. It's just an X-ray attack right. from okay. MK9 and X. Nice. Um, are are now like I said for total free. Also, if you whiff or they're blocked, they regenerate. Oh, fascinating. Which I don't quite like. Um, so it seems like they're making this whole, from what I can tell from what you, the little you've told me so far, mm-hmm. it seems like what they're trying to do is make it so that it slows momentum if somebody's just getting destroyed. Mm-hmm. Or if somebody, it it basically allows for some negative feedback. If somebody's mm-hmm. like doing really well, yeah. like, okay, but now your it's opponent... Comeback mechanic. Yeah, now your opponent's going to get this special move that they can do. Mm-hmm. Even if they're bad with it and they whiff with it, they can right. do it again. Yeah. Like, they will land it on you eventually. Seems like it. And so, Especially competitive play. Yeah, you and so it's, it it's, it. it's a pretty big comeback, and so I bet what we'll see is just a lot of trepidation around that 30% mark, where you try not to get anybody to 30% unless uh, you have them in a really good position, and you can just kill them. Maybe. Uh, that, that might be, that we'll very well might be, and, and the one thing I have appreciated about NetherRealm, as it's, I've, I've, I've followed it through four games now, this will be the fifth game that I've like kept up on, from Injustice 1, MK9 to Injustice 1. Uh, to MKX, and, and, to yeah, Justice 2, now to 11. Yep. Um, but uh, I've watched, I've gotten into competitive for all of those. I've seen MK9 was retro, retroactive, but that was even still being played when I got into Injustice. Right? They've taken a lot of care to uh, differentiate their games. The speed and, and the pacing of MK11 looks a lot, lot different, and it looks a lot slower and more tactical. Interesting. MKX was really rushed down heavy, where there was almost no zoning, no um, space control, mm-hmm. very little mid-game, or, or footsies as it's called. Um, where you're just trying to poke your opponent, right? Right. Um, and okay. then confirm into that. Right. Okay, right. It was all just constant pressure. If you got separated, there were a bunch of mechanics that allowed you to get close really fast again. Oh. Um, and uh, so, and there were very few kind of good zoning characters. Um, so MK11 seems to be taking a step back from that and playing a little bit slower and more methodical. Mm-hmm. Um, so it would make tons of sense, if, like, like you said, if there is some level of being able to play around your opponent's health might health meter and not grant them the fatal blow mechanic. Sure. Um, which would be brilliant. I, I think that'd be really cool. Anyway, okay, so to keep on talking about super moves. Sure, yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> now that we've finally gotten here. The reason that the super moves that we've been discussing tend to, in, especially in the NRS games, tend to not be used is because they, one, uh, damage scaling, which is just a normal fighting game thing, which the longer a combo lasts, the less damage each hit will do. Right. So the same exact move at the beginning of the combo will do less damage at the end of the combo. Right. Right. So that you can't just... One, so that getting small amounts of hits can actually matter, and as well as you can still have long, beautiful combo chains. Um, in the NRS games, they tend to... A huge combo would be in the 40% range of a health bar. Okay. Um, a great, a good B&B, bread and butter, just your normal kind of easy yeah. pull-off, would be in the high 20s to low 30s. Um, and then mid 30s would be really good damage, and then high 30s, low 40s is big boy damage. Okay. Um... So the idea being, hey, you have to at least, at the very least, you have to open someone up three times. Right. Uh, and that's with huge amounts of resources yeah. uh, to be able to, to, to kill a life bar. Um, and so with one one huge part of that is that the, the second, secondary resource in the NRS games is called meter. Mm-hmm. In large part, you just build. Um, usually, you can get three or four bars of it, in, depending on the game. Right. Um, you build up when you take damage or when your attacks are blocked. Um so you just kind of generate it passively. Or when you do special moves, it'll do a little bit more. Um, but the idea being that you can spend it on um, special moves, and they'll do something else with a special move. So uh, if your special move is you know, shooting a gun, then you can meter burn it, and you'll shoot five times instead of one. Sure. Right. Um, to do extra damage or extend a combo, to poke someone out of something, to give it armor, any of these kind of game mechanics. And that seems like what people, what the games are moving toward is yes. more augmented normal attacks rather than these longer animations. It's the same reason you don't see like um, super weapons a lot in RTSs. I don't know if you've ever watched yeah. any RTS games, but you much rather if you can spend five thousand credits on a on a nuke or fifty tanks. Right. What do you spend it on? The tanks. Easy. Every time. Right. Yeah. It gives you way more flexibility. Yep. 
And, it and they stick you, around. Yep. It gives you one way more options. Um, it's not a one-time thing. Right. So if you miss, then it doesn't matter. And options are king in strategy games. Yeah. So it's, it's all just resource management for both of them. Right. So in the case of a bar, right, say if with... So a lot of times combos are designated by how many bars they take. So a combo could be one or two bars. Okay. So you can do easily uh you know, one of the extreme examples that was shown on a on a great channel on youtube that we were watching was literally a one percent difference in attacks but so you can get really easily a combo starter that will uh uses one bar and will consistently do 32 percent damage um and you can have up to four bars in the game right right um versus using your super move and the super moves are almost always do a big, huge... I mean, it'd be like high 30s, low 40s mm -hmm. for a super move. Um, that is obviously bar for bar. <laughs> if you can get one bar that does 20% four times, that's 80%. Right. As opposed to the one four uh, high 30s. Three. Yeah. Um, so it's actually just super inefficient, as well as there's other things other than just offense that the bars can be used for. They can be used for push blocks, they can be used for combo breakers, they can be used for uh, maneuvering. Mm -hmm. um, all kinds of different things the bars can be used for in those games. Uh, that, again, just having resources at your disposal... Sometimes they can be used for health regen in the Injustice games. Right. Um, they are super, super... Uh, um, there's a lot of variations in the way that you can use them. Uh -huh. So throwing them all into a single attack that you kind of do, uh, maybe with two, like even two bars, Some so you can do spend two bars and sometimes do as much as an entire super. It means super is almost never a good idea unless you're super desperate, unless you need to guarantee the damage. Right. Um, or, or you just want to see what the animation looks like because you're so, cool. Okay, so all those last three things I just said uh -huh. are all really cool. Yeah, they are. And, and they're all really intense. And when they happen live, because they're so rare, it's awesome. Yeah, and people and super go hype. crazy for it. Yeah, exactly, when a super hype. move actually lands, or an x-ray. Uh -huh. um, and, so, and so, yeah, you didn't see them very much, almost never. Right. Um, but when they were used, it actually felt appropriately super, you know? Yeah, that's true, because it's appropriately rare. Yeah. Um... And, and it's usually going to be used in a like, life and death scenario, so usually if a super connects, it's like, mm -hmm. it's the end of the round. Um, one thing I hate about a lot of those, the, the NRX games, is you can pause and end the game oh, when a super connects, so a lot of times when people get hit by one, they'll just cancel and restart the match, oh, because they know they lost. Right. Um, and they so won't they let, won't let it play out. They won't out. the animation to play. Ah, uh, interesting. Which is stupid, they should remove that and force yeah. you to watch yeah, I agree. I think that's a real momentum shift, right? Because if you have to watch the animation, it's demoralizing. Yeah. The crowd's probably going to go yeah. crazy. Like, yeah. I think it really changes the dynamics to be able to just be like, okay, I lost that. So, all this to say, go over to the DBZ format where pretty much the end of almost every combo, I mean, 8% of the combos in that game will end with a super of some type. Uh-huh. Um, which is a slightly shorter animation than the ones we were talking about with NRS. Definitely, yeah. Um, or the DBZ, or the... Uh, uh, MK11, which I've seen a lot of footage for. I've already been released uh, footage of, I think, at least seven characters um, with the with the fatal blows to them. That are those ones are like full on, I don't know, seven eight seconds at okay. least. Yeah, and they're pretty intricate. It would cool. be like fatalities in previous games. It's insane. Okay, because they're they're so. Which seven or eight seconds doesn't sound like a lot, but if you're having to watch them every match, I mean, yeah. people who play fighting games are going to play hundreds of matches, yeah, like just can. just to get good, as yes. they say, you yes. know. And oh, so, okay. like eight, eight second animation adds up. Oh, totally. So as I was say, particularly, so it's an interesting thing because you're banking on, particularly with the spectacle, you're banking on those animations being good enough that they don't get old, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and. I don't know, it just seems like to do that, you want to keep them, like, simple and short, which just, you keep on paring that down, just becomes, like, a, another move. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's repeatable and, and cool. And then it doesn't feel cool. Right, exactly, or special. And particularly with the MK1, the fatality sequence is, because a lot of times if you, because think about it, like, you, you can only use the fatal blow at, at a low health situation. Mm -hmm. um, so unless you're getting curb stomped, usually your, your enemy might be pretty close. So it's not, it's not, I wouldn't say it would be uncommon for the way it's used right now, that you could end a lot of matches with it, mm -hmm. right? So you end the match with a fatal blow, which is like an eight-second cutscene. Right. And then you do a fatality, which is another, like, ten seconds. Oh, gosh. You know? Yeah. Um, and so that actually sets away from the fatalities the amount of tension, and like I said, the, the x-rays are, uh, or the fatal blows are, could easily be uh, fatalities by themselves. Right, they're long um, enough. Exactly. Well, and just brutal enough. Right. They, there's, they are many times over killing. It's funny if you watch, <laughs> go watch the, and if you have high tolerance for violence, the escalation of the Mortal Kombat series, even from nine 
uh, to 10 to 11. Uh-huh. Um, just the, the x-ray moves, the super moves. Oh, really? Do you like see the amount of brutality goes Like, in like 9, it's like one or two hits, and you'll see a bone break. And it's uh-huh. like, okay, you can survive that. And then in, like, 10, there'll be, like, a sword goes through your face, and then he pulls you back and, like, hits the sword further into your face. Right. Like, okay, that would definitely kill you. And now in, like, 11, like, at one point, one character, like, sets up a mini gunner mm-hmm. at one end of the stage and then, like, drags the person into the fire and, like, runs them up to it and then, like, holds their head against it and the last bullet, like, blows their head off. <laughs> so it's like you don't even have a and body anymore. Oh, and then insane. they get up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then you do a fatality. And it's like, wow. oh, is that really, you know, like, thematically appropriate? And, like, I get that's the whole point of Mortal Kombat. Mm-hmm. Um, but even as a viewer... Like at the reveals, which is like the hypest part. So uh-huh. it was cool to see the moose the first time, but I was like, when did, because they always would do that in the reveals too. Right. They would save it until the very last, they get a kill with a fatal blow and then they do the fatality. Yeah. Um, but it was one after the other and it, it didn't, I don't know, I don't think it worked as well. Really? Me. Because it was just too much yeah. like animation and yeah. brutality. I was yeah. like, okay, this was, I'm just kind of watching a like 20 second cutscene yeah, of basically. people dying instead of watching a fighting game. Right, and they didn't even die on the first one. <laughs> right, yeah, which is weird. It seems like they should have. That's another thing I found interesting about uh, fighting games. This is a slightly this is a slight tangent. Right. I don't know if you have anything else to say on super moves at this point. No, uh, no, go ahead. Um, which is uh, this mostly deals with um, injustice and and Mortal Kombat again because those are my like I said those are the ones I know the best, but. Um, when you have this, this happened with one character particularly uh, from Injustice. His name's Atrocitus. He's a Red Lantern. Do you know, like the Green Lanterns? Mm-hmm. There's Red Lanterns uh, who are like rage filled, okay. like rage based. They just sure. like feed on anger, and so he's this giant, huge, hulking, kind of demonic looking creature whose who's, the whole thing is rage, and he's just rage, 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 rage. rage. Uh-huh. And so he hits really hard, and he's really brutal. Um, and particularly one movie has is like this kind of like he can float and he like punch. Basically, he just it's this brutal like eight punch sequence where he just like will car- corner carry you all the way across the stage almost it'll be like a punch walk right. he'll just be flying forward punching like indefinitely interesting not indefinitely but for right. a while right and um that move was really really good uh, uh because it was a really good ender um it, w- it started up really quick um and it could be meter burned into, into a damage over time effect which was really good mm-hmm. um so it's utilized a ton particularly as a combo ender and so they end up having to nerf it. Mm-hmm. So you have this animation where it, it is just like he's pummeling this huge red rage monster just pummeling you with his fists. Mm-hmm. And it does like 6% damage, which is like not much at all. Interesting. So, and that's something I've been noticing with with those levels of, like basically trying to make a, the, the cognitive distance that happens between an animation that looks like a huge hit and makes it feel like a huge hit, but it doesn't actually do anything. Right. It begins to really lower, it. you do build tolerance even just watching the game a bit. Yeah. Um, I mean, I remember in the simplest form, I remember being absolutely horrified by the MK9 mm-hmm. uh, X-rays, and right. now the MK11 fatalities make those look like child's play right and so they're having to sort of up the ante in terms of like time. right to try to get the same sort of feeling out of people who are watching and that happens on a smaller level too like i said just even in the Which matches individual where you hits. see sure. a, a, a tiny hit that should feel like a tiny hit versus a big and that gets complicated too when you get into like you know relative power levels and and you know if superman kind of swats you a little bit that should be a huge hit right but right not quite so there's obviously like a, a level of that coming down but then I was thinking about that when I was watching uh, when we were watching DBZ, mm-hmm. and that game doesn't feel that way to me. Um, that that game all feels appropriately interesting. Stuff, scale, when stuff yeah. hits it. The, the heavy stuff seems to do damage, or it feels like it's going to do damage. Yeah. Um, and then the lighter stuff looks appropriately, you know, like it's doing contact and it's a move, but it's not. It's not going to do a lot of damage. Exactly. Yeah, I would say that that's true. Like I, I agree with. I felt that same scaling. Like, yeah. uh, unlike other, like, uh, Mortal Kombat games, or mm-hmm. when you see some really, in- moves that look really intense in Injustice, I think it's like, because they, they have the superheroes, so they want to use all their gadgets and all their moves, yeah. but it's, I don't know, like, a lot of those moves would just kill you outright. Obviously. Right? I mean. <laughs> that's just true of, like, a lot of, you know, superhero stuff anyway, so it's like, obviously I'm, you know, not being, like, it's not realistic, because that's not the point. It's not supposed to be realistic, but there should be a translation of watching... And intuitive, that's just like for the game. That's why you're not watching a movie. It's like intuitively you should be able to understand what's happening on the screen with right. how hard someone got hit. That should do more damage. That's right. And so like if it's that. a big monster kind of going ham, you don't expect, you know, 6% right. damage at 100%. Right. Exactly. So that's that's just like a balance thing um, that's hmm. got to be quite difficult to do. And I'd say the best games, the, the best fighting games do that really well. 
Um, and that's really tough because there's so much tied to animation, yeah. right? Like there, we just talked about all this frame data. You can't just it can't just be like, well, you just change the animation to not look as intense because then now you're modifying frame data, which changes the entire way the character plays. Right. Or you're having to come up. I actually watched. Uh, did we talk this last week? Animation. I watched a whole series on animation fighting games. Okay. Yeah, I don't uh, think we talked about this. Which I can the, talk a little bit about. But yeah, you're you're exactly right. Is Either A, you have to... Yeah, exactly. If you're going to change stuff, you can't change the animation. Especially after the game's released, if you're balancing things, you just have to change the data. You can't change the, the animations. Right. I mean, you can, but it's it's dangerous. Um, but the other thing is that, yeah, so if you decide, even in development, that, hey, this move is coming out too fast or too slow, or for the amount of damage it does, or the way it can be used, it's got to be different. Um, that causes the animators to need... They have to work around that first, right? Right. Um, which is really interesting. So you have to be able to say, like... Say it's an uppercut where the character has to go from standing to like kind of crouched to bring their fist up to finishing all the way up to bring all the way back down, and that's right. got to happen in eight frames. Like you only you only have a few keyframes you're able to use for that, right? Yeah. And so it's not going to be quite as smooth or quite as um, intricate as you would want it to be, right? Or potentially would want it to be, right? Because um, you just don't have a lot of time. <laughs> exactly. So you have to either a get super creative with your animation, mm -hmm. um, or b. Uh, have Mortal Kombat and Injustice animation, which apparently is super, super blocky and, and stiff. Have you ever noticed that watching it? I'm curious. Um, no. Those uh, games are notorious in the fighting game community for having the worst animation of, like, any fighting game. Interesting. And, and I just don't know enough about, like, the how fighting games should feel to be able to notice the blockiness. Me either. I watched hundreds of hours of, like, of, both, of both of those games. Uh -huh. And, to be fair, not too much. I've seen other. I've seen Street Fighter. I've seen Marvel and uh, NBC. Seen a decent amount of Tekken. Um, we just watched a DBZ tournament. Yep, DBZ I've seen plenty of. And I never would have said, like, yeah, Injustice seems to have significantly worse animations. Hmm. Um, but in this breakdown, it actually does have very... Uh, they take a bunch of shortcuts, basically. What I was just talking about, where you either can get super creative with your frames, uh -huh. or kind of take some shortcuts yeah. to make sure the game is, is mechanically super sound. Uh -huh. um, they took a bunch of shortcuts. Interesting. And I actually maintain it's not the worst thing because there's so many other places that such deep polish goes into those games, like the voice acting, the story, the amount of customization, right. uh, the sheer uh, um, having a fully cinematic story mode, uh, the character interactions, um, the the stage designs and stage interactions you can do. Um, it makes a little bit of sense why that game because and I was I was when I was watching the series I was like okay so let's go look at this guy who was an animator mm -hmm. what the games that have great animation were and in large part there were games I had never I had not heard of uh, yeah that, that looked story. really pretty and were not ever played competitively right, right exactly <laughs> um, so I was like yeah you have to kind of pick your poison in terms of where development time and, and energy goes I'm guessing the because like he was talking about like he was kind of. Uh, I don't want to reflect too poorly on him, but he, he was he kind of had a, a bone to pick, it seemed, and was talking about how, like, you know, these are AAA games and we should hold them to a higher standard mm -hmm. um, in terms of animation, which might be true, but I think that assumes that the animators, like, decided to do that because they were inept sure. or, like, knew what would be better. I think they, like, made conscious development decisions to... Uh, Prioritize other things. Yeah, basically. Yeah, um, and likely. those were the things that tended to be celebrated in reviews. Well, especially if you know that people are going to be playing your game competitively. Like, yeah. right, if you make the next Street Fighter, you know it's going to be played competitively. Right, and so like you, it makes sense. It's a good business decision to like focus on prioritizing mechanics and the way that the game plays on a competitive level. Yeah, rather than it obviously looks to matter to people, and that's one of the reasons why DBZ beat out MVC, yeah. and that was like a big deal because yeah. the DBZ fighter just looks really good and it's really yeah. smooth. And it does look like playing the cartoon. Yeah. Um. So obviously, if you can do both, do both. But yeah, yeah I, I do think that it's smart for them to prioritize more mechanical competitive concerns than just the looks. Have you played how much of a, a Smash? Have you played decent amount? Decent amount, like newest. I want to say I almost said Smash ultimate, 4, not ultimate. ultimate. I, I have not played a lot of ultimate. Okay, I've played yes. a few hours of ultimate. Okay. Because there's another interesting question, which is as we're talking about uh, all and and I forget if I mentioned on cast or not, but like the, the NRS games are in a pretty strict two year cycle, mm -hmm. where both in terms of the release as well as the competitive life, people pretty much because the community is small enough and the two series are similar enough. Um, that all the pro players will move on to the newest one because it's where all the money is and the hype is so right. then everyone follows them and so they kind of die um, and I think that's actually true of most fighting games except yeah. for 
Super Smash Brothers. Melee! Where they play Melee all the time. so strange. But in any case, all these rules we're talking about in terms of... Melee is like the least... And Melee might just be the... the one in a million. The golden goose. Basically, you know, the, the, the anomaly. The yeah. mutant X gene amongst humans. <laughs> uh, that manages to be the most popular... Game in a genre, arguably one of the biggest fighting games, period. Mm-hmm. Um, while still being, like, the least accessible, the strangest, and, like, on a console from 2000, what, four? Three? Yeah. When, when did Melee come out? Three? Uh, it was, it, it might have been two. I don't two remember. I got it. Like Regardless, 15 The years month ago. it came out, but I don't remember when it was. <laughs> um, like, everything we've just been talking about in terms of, like, the, the amount of information that's conveyed, the cinematicness, the ability to appreciate um, the mind games. Mm-hmm. No one, like, it's just not the way that Smash is not accessible It's at just all. an exception. Well, which actually brings me to, I'm glad we got to this point, because I think that being able to watch fighting games as a spectacle is really easy, right? You don't have to know anything about fighting games. You don't have to know any of the terminology or how they work to be able to appreciate a fatality. And One guy gets the crap beaten out of him, right? Right, yeah. right, or Superman taking somebody up into the stratosphere. Right. Like, that just looks cool. It doesn't right. matter who you are. Right. To be able to appreciate it on a more nuanced level, and that, and that way it's kind of like appreciating a fine art, right? Yeah. Without being too pretentious about yeah, it, right? No, no, like, it's a, you've got to know... Well, to be pretentious. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but, uh... It's a safe spot. <laughs> You know, I know people who, when they listen to classical music, they can tell you like all the little part things that the the composer was doing with that piece, right. how the orchestra is interacting with the composer, right. and like how they're interpreting that piece, and mm-hmm. you know all, all this nuanced detail. I don't know anything about because I'm just not very versed in classical music. Right. But I think similarly, when you watch a fighting game tournament, like. Yes, you can appreciate, I can appreciate a good piece of music. Like, I like music, I'll go listen to an orchestra. Right. But in the same way, like, I can appreciate Superman taking someone up into the stratosphere, it might be lost on me to, like, notice a, you know, fuzzy guard break yeah. that, that happens in the middle of a long combo string. And Absolutely. and I think, like, a lot of people, they would probably be lost on them. Or even, like, why something works that happens. I mean, that's one great thing about the little 10-second rewind on YouTube on, uh, on mobile nowadays is that, uh, I mean, same thing on desktop you just use the arrow keys but all the same um being able to i mean i I just stuff happens too fast and i have to be able to rewatch it to understand exactly how it goes so sometimes it's even like okay i saw that thing work but i don't know why it worked Mm -hmm. um i have to go back and like watch the preceding moments leading up to that to Mm -hmm. figure out and sometimes we just straight up couldn't even figure it out i was like yeah it looks like he just stopped blocking entirely and i don't believe that he did right there's probably something more to it exactly the amount of of, of one practice, the expertise, the um, mental fortitude, especially watching uh, live tournaments, dude, mm-hmm. is such a intense, like, to be up on that stage, mm-hmm. um, watching everyone, hearing the crowd respond as stuff goes north or south for you. Yeah. It's got to be, or, you know, you drop a game. Um, oh, I yeah. love I love long sets. I like best outs of seven. Uh-huh. are my favorite because it gives the more time that you have to, to really show uh, uh, how good of a competitor you are to be able to adapt to pressure or yeah. to be able to learn. The other person's uh, the play other, style. The other and... person's play style and adapt, which yeah. is really cool to watch where you go down 3 oh, and then some, at least something clicks, and then the rest of them, then it's 4 oh, like a reverse sweep, like nothing happened. Yeah. Because like the download was complete. Like so, it's so cool. It's amazing oh, yeah. to me that people can do that. It's amazing. Um, and then especially if you pick up a fighting game, I remember I, I, the only one, I mean, I played Injustice, a little bit of Injustice 2, and I played actually most of uh, MKX, I'd say. And I mean, I would spend hours practicing like three or four combos that I could get like up into the like 30s high okay. 30s. and I was like super proud when I would land I can only do it in practice right <laughs> so then to be able to see these things pulled it's off back to back against real people who are very good at countering them the point of all that is like I don't know man like I, I also I played sports I grew up playing sports I was a, a slightly above average athlete I would say mm-hmm. probably not great but uh, you know I hope I was uh, part of the team right um i don't know i see i see a very similar level of mastery between like these guys feel on a, as different a level for me when i play these games as i feel watching professional athletes. professional yeah soccer or anything like that it's insane i mean it's just it's remarkable so in terms of like the whole esports of sports or not mm-hmm. i think the push for like treating them like traditional sports leagues is stupid because it feels cringy a lot of the time yeah and, like, it's a little weird trying to force it to be something that it's not and these guys are not charismatic at all and yeah at that point <laughs> 
But in terms of the level of like skill and technique that goes into these, and and really the levels of training, I mean, it's easy to kind of write it off as as people just playing video games. Um, but it is actually like practice, mm-hmm. and uh, these guys tend to view their games as sports, uh, and are really. It's funny because what we're saying about melee, you know, how I said that there was like the spectacle and mm-hmm. then there's like the technical part. Mm-hmm. Melee is just a technical part. Seems like it. And that's why it's really inaccessible is because there is no big flashy animation where you're like, oh my gosh, he just, you know, shot him with a missile. Right. It's like, nope, it's just like a lot of really fast like stuff happened and someone punch died. And someone goes flying. Right, yeah. Or even like the really most impressive things in the game. I mean, like, I guess landing a Falcon Punch, but even like. The uh, like. That would like be getting... so disrespectful at a competitive melee. Exactly, punch. exactly. Like, that doesn't actually happen, right? Um, it's usually just like an up tilt from Fox. <laughs> it's right. like, and oh, that's, oh, it. that's a fine animation, and the guy went off the screen. Mm-hmm. Um, or like, you know, a great like edge guard is like super underwhelming. Oh yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah, and, and he couldn't get back. Yeah, exactly, so. and that's and that's it. Um, incredibly hard, incredibly intricate, incredibly cool. So I think I don't know. I, I love the idea of games being able to really uh, reward mastery with something equivalently cool looking on the screen. Right, um, and. Uh, I think that is, I don't know, I think that's part of the reason I like the juggle combos in in Mortal Kombat and uh, Injustice is that they, uh, as as the, com- as the you know, when you hit someone up in the air, they, they get juggled. So every hit, they you know, go up a little bit more, mm-hmm. which is not the way anything works. But um, along with damage scaling, there's gravity scaling. So the longer, you can't get an infinite combo uh, because eventually the, the person keeps on falling faster and faster throughout so the So the juggle gets hard to maintain. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, but as the juggle gets harder and harder to maintain, then people have to get more and more creative with getting ways to keep it going, right? Yeah, which might involve having them hit the ground so they reset that the gravity scaling, right? Yes, yes, sometimes. Okay. Um, or stopping the combo entirely in order to let it reset. Mm-hmm. In any case, uh, that is really impressive to me because you, you that is a literal... It, it's getting harder and harder as it's happening in real time, mm-hmm. and you're watching as they're figuring out ways to keep these combos going. Right. And a lot of times there will be... Uh, uh, really creative combinations of things like it, that they appear to be improvising in real time mm-hmm. um, to keep it going, uh, and that, like to me, is, is mastery displayed as opposed to uh, you know going back to the fatal blow mechanic in MK11, where you manage to you know connect one single hit and then an animation plays. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the coolest, baddest thing in the game, but it's actually not too hard to connect. Right. Um, so that's at that point you've sort of earned that, though. I guess is kind of the way the game's designed, right? Yeah, maybe. I mean, just the equivalent thing about, like, you know, when you, the, the unbelievable catch in, in the end of the touch, you know, the end of the end zone, um, right. getting, barely getting both feet in. Like, there's no way, like, that is mastery and impressiveness uh, in equal display. Right. Um, the cooler it looks, the harder it is most of the time. Right. Um, and that's mostly true with fighting games, except for these, like, auto combos. Kind yeah, of. or, like, melee. Um, or, uh, you know, uh, in some ways, some of the, the DBZ, big super attacks, too. Um, that's an interesting problem, I think, that they have, which is a lot of times the coolest, hardest things are the flashiest. Right. Um, and and usually the flashiest things kind of take control out of the hands of people. Right. Right, exactly. Yeah, and in a fighting game, that's the whole point, is that it's just straight mechanics, right? Right. It's like, it's, it's just... And we've, we this overlaps some stuff we talked about before. We talked about um, the classic Medal of Honor example, which mm-hmm. is like games trying to be more cinematic inherently mm-hmm. takes control away from the player. Pressing a button to do something as we've, opposed to... Yeah, we've also talked about like press button to launch nuke. Yep. Like, you know, yep. like the idea that just doing something really cool, if you don't feel like you earned that, yeah. Yeah. it, it kind of makes it feel cheap. Yeah. And so I think one of the cool fighting games are at their best because or when they make you do something really difficult with the controller, and something really cool happens on screen. Because you earned that happening. Yeah, and I think that's why fatalities were such a great thing, uh, particularly earlier when they were a lot tighter. Um, They used to not be... You had to figure it out yourself, so if you knew a fatality, it was like a cool thing. This also was a little bit before, you know, information age. It was like a... a, a, um, an Easter egg of stories of types, mm-hmm. but two, one, you've earned it because you won the match, so it's just gloating at that point. Yeah, cherry on um, top, which is cool. Um, and two, it was uh, original fatalities actually were really intricate, usually six or seven button presses mm-hmm. um, within a, a specific area of the map. Like you had to be a specific distance from your opponent, and it had to be. It was in a very short time span, and if you messed up, then you wouldn't be able to do it again. Right. Um, they've since made that laxer and laxer over time. Right. They're more because they're cool. Yeah, exactly. Because it's fun. They want people to do them, which is fine too. But um, everything you were talking about there in terms of, uh, like, something that feels earned, mm-hmm. um, as well as something that, like, at that point, um, the, com- the competitive part is over, right? It's, it is actually entirely Right, because the game is over. Won, yeah. Um, or lost. 
Um, and uh, so I think the fatality system in that regard is actually really cool because it doesn't it, it, it doesn't require uh, one like I said there's it's an intricate move that you have to be able to pull off but two um, it doesn't require any level of um, it doesn't break up the action it doesn't like we were talking about in terms of kind of like the the momentum of the match yeah um, and it doesn't require you to it, it's not asking you to do something and to be rewarded like in game for it like the point of the, of the game is like you know this ongoing chess match right um, and there's no breaks in that and exactly. then at the end you can do a fatality exactly yeah but I think that works really well actually in a lot of ways and DBZ did that a little bit where they would add on if you like finished someone with a super move it would there was like, an show a little bit animation. extra animation where it like zoom out and show the whole planet exploding or right or you go to a different uh, um, part of the stage mm-hmm. uh, that sort of thing um, and then something also sorry I just keep on having different thoughts no, coming up at any point there's something else that NRS did. Um, the first game that they had to do it was the first of Justice, which was stage transitions, where you'd go to a map, and the map would have three different stages on it, two mm-hmm. or three. Okay. And if you got hit by a certain type of attack at the edge of a stage, you, you would, play a, stage. Yeah, it would, it would play a really intricate cutscene of your you know, getting mauled across the map mm-hmm. and through space, and it would feel all connected because then you'd land in the new area. Right. And you have a new set of things to play with. Which is interesting because it, that whole mechanic is, it's very intricate because, first of all, you get you get a free being out of the corner, right? Mm-hmm. So if you're stuck in the corner and then you trigger one of these transitions, now you're out of the corner. So being in the corner just refers to being pressed up to the edge of the map, mm-hmm. people don't know. Um, and it's, not, it's a really bad place to be because you can't move backward anymore and your opponent can just keep hitting you. Um, normally, your oh, opponent... There's has, a lot of combos you can do in the corner that you couldn't do elsewhere. Right, because you're... You, they're called, the you're not going to go flying away from nope. the other character. Just straight up. Right, you're just going to stay right there. And so in that way, it's uh, negative feedback for the person who's winning, right? Mm-hmm. They're they're doing well, and then it slows them down. Yep. But also the transition does extra damage. So mm-hmm. it's exactly. it's kind of a toss-up. Mm-hmm. But I, I, like the, I appreciate that it sort of resets the match a little bit yeah. and gets players back on equal footing. Yeah, it tends to be actually a, a, a thing to not be desired in competitive play because similar to super moves, it usually isn't going to add a whole ton of damage on top of what you were doing. Uh-huh, and I mean, you'd much rather keep corner pressure. Right. Um, but it does limit your options as well as if you know you hit someone with a, a back three, which is the move that will send you uh, too close to the edge of the map, You know, then you'll, you'll send them on the transition. Or if it is going to be used for cashing out or like getting a quick side switch and then hitting someone off into it to be able to slow down the match a little bit if you're getting kind of rushed down mm-hmm. um, and getting some damage on top of it, that's great too. Um, anyway, that is to say, between one and two, the they super shortened the transitions in two. Um, like okay. like half, half time. Like It was kind of like a mini super move in one. Right. And it's pretty intricate, kind of Rube Goldberg-esque kind of interaction between you and the environment. Yeah. As various things hit you or blew you up or or kept your momentum moving. Uh-huh. Um, whereas in 2, it's it's very, it's usually like a boom, hit, 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 and then you're in like the new place. Okay, um, interesting. Which uh, people generally, it was, it's, you can never please anyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> people were like, yeah, I like the old transitions, which before they were like, transitions break things up too much. Give me a moral combat. <laughs> but, uh, and then... Anyway, so. Well, I think that might bring us to like the last point I want to talk about is just that when watching fighting games as as a sort of spectator, I think one of the things you would notice immediately is just that how strong the emotions run during fighting games. Um, and I think that it does come out in the community where like people just have a lot of salt, a lot of things to complain about because mm-hmm. these games can get into your head and yeah. you can get really pissed about losing because if you're losing, it's just you. Yeah. Right. Like it's just you and one other person, right? Yeah. So like, if you can't blame it on your team, yeah. there wasn't any like idiot playing a bad character who's you know like not not viable or whatever, yeah. not like an Overwatch. Yeah. Um, it's it's just you, and yeah. so I think emotions do run really high, and you'll notice that when spectating that people go crazy, and so do the. Uh, you know, I've seen videos of people like breaking their controllers after like people who are you know get to championship matches and lose and break their controllers. Yeah, I mean, Hungrybox, one of the best Super Smash players in the world, uh, famously broke his hand. Oh, actually my hitting a metal table. Oh wow! Out of frustration. Yeah. At tournament, that's that's you can find like the video of that. Jeez. It's insane. And he like he like shakes it off as it like ah oh, that hurts, and then he like actually like is like keeps on shaking it, and he does that for the rest of the tournament. I think he ended up getting eliminated. And he oh posted a goodness. picture from the doctor's office in that full cast. <laughs> oh he actually, my like, goodness. It was like a hairline fracture in his hand. Oh, wow. Um, so, yeah, that, that sort of stuff definitely happens. 
Yeah. Good. Well, I don't know if you were going to keep going with that or. No, it was just one of the things I wanted to point out. Oh is yeah, like, pop offs are unlike, and I think unlike and any so other too, like man. esports. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right? There's some some sort of like satisfaction you get from just I don't know if satisfaction is the right word, but you just, it's enjoyable to see people get really into this. Yeah. Well, pop offs are usually good. That's like when you win and they literally just jump out of their chair. Oh, and that's like not not when you're like flaming someone. I see. Uh, but I don't like watching that actually. Okay. It tends to not happen too much. The most you'll get is teabagging in the game, which I think is hilarious. Yeah. And super disrespectful. It's been really controversial. Uh, like, yeah. People want to take it out of games. Like really? That. Oh yeah. It's yeah hilarious. There's been, like in funny games. Yeah. There's been it's funny. there's been people who've wanted to take it out. Um, <laughs> I don't think it's actually been done. It hasn't been done in any no. competitive game. But. And it's too important to be able to crouch quickly. Which is just the whole point. I mean, it's just crashing. Right, it's just an animation. It's like how people... But, uh, but yeah. No, no I, I agree entirely. And that is that does come through. I remember watching a, a Super Smash Bros. Brawl, actually, tournament. Back when Brawl was the newest game. Uh-huh. Uh, and um, I think it was... What was it? Was it Summit? I think it was Summit. I think but I watched this with you, yeah. Yeah, yeah they showed it was... Uh, it was um, Mewtwo King versus... Uh, Seriously, Samus player. Was yeah. It? Salem. Salem. Salem, okay. Yep. And uh, Salem was the super underdog, and he was playing a character that was considered, like, middle, high tier, and mm-hmm. Mewtwo King is, like, this old veteran who's the best, and he was playing the, like, you know, triple S plus tier character, mm-hmm. Meta Knight, who was literally banned in some tournaments for being too good, Right. and uh, Salem pulls it out, and it was, like, so It was so, so hype. <laughs> and like, it was just watching, much less being in the... Or even if, if, you, if you ever sat down and played a game... Um, a fighting game, much like even just Super Smash Bros, where you get down to the last moments and you're just trying your best and like you're gritting your teeth and then you finally get to the last hit and then it goes off. Yeah. That feeling released just in your living room and then multiply that out to like when there's thousands of, thousands of dollars on the line. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, a, a fully kind of integrated tournament scene that fighting games do have. Yeah. Um, in terms of the people will grind through local tournaments, they'll have to win points. To be able to qualify for majors, then they'll go to majors, and you know, usually four or five majors a year, and they'll travel, um, they're sponsored, and then they have to go through a double elimination bracket through pools, mm-hmm. and the top eight, and a lot of times will be, you know, a, a full grand finals that they have to win. So when that finally happens, I mean, that is hours of grinding yeah. just to get there, much less all their, like, normal practice time. Uh, so it is, I don't know, I think, it's, I think it's cool, and I think it's uniquely fun for me to watch, um... Because there's a lot of, like, like it's similar to, like, wrestling, where there's, like, storylines between the players. Because oh, yeah. it's an individual thing, you can have rivalries. Like, you don't have that in, like, the team games as much, like with the MOBAs or the FPSs. Right, no. Where, I mean, like, you have single players. I mean, yeah. You can have, like, rivalries, like, in football. But I, right. I it doesn't feel as, like, potent, or, like, the tension doesn't seem yeah. as palpable, yeah. I guess. When, you when like, you see two know. people who just hate each other. Exactly. And you're like, well, yeah. they have to sit next to each other now. Yeah, literally. <laughs> That's the other thing that always boggles my mind, is, like, that they'll, like... You know, have these... Remember, they, they had one at the, the big, huge uh, the, uh, IPS, the Injustice Premier League. Um, for another realm, they actually had, at, I think it was CEO, where they had them... They literally played in a in a boxing ring. They oh, had them, like, wow. do an entrance. Interesting. Like, like, where, like, people would, like, part the curtains and their music would play. And they'd go, uh-huh. yeah, it's kind of cringy, because a lot of these nerds are not... You know, they're nerds. And, um... But so they did all that, and then the two of them were, like, playing on, like, a 18-inch monitor... Oh, like in, in the middle of, of the yeah, ring. Yeah, it was so funny. I was like, dude, get them at least yeah, separate you're... TVs or... Or not separate TVs. You don't want that because you want to be on the same. But at the same time, like, I don't know, something... Something more impressive. If you're going to go out of your way to get maybe, a boxing ring, like... Yeah. Maybe it could be... I mean, it might be... Refer- like, you know, like, mail has to be played on old TVs to get the refresh rate perfect. Right. Maybe yeah. there's some level of you can't have a big enough monitor because the... And the timings are so precise. Yeah, that's in possible. fighting games? I don't even know. But I don't think that's... I think you can go bigger than, like, the 14-inch. Well, I think it's probably a good place for us to stop. Yep. Um, we hope that you enjoyed this foray into fighting games. There's more we could talk about with us, certainly. Like, any one of these topics, we could do a much deeper dive in. Yep. Um, and there are a lot of good resources online. Although, I did I did notice that it was... It's harder to break into than you would think. Oh, my gosh. Right? There's, there is a steep learning curve with fighting games. Years. Um yeah, and so... Most probably. It took me about, like, a year. So we may cover, like, a specific topic in fighting games um, later on down the line. But I uh, just want to talk about sort of the spectacle of fighting games. Check out a fighting game tournament. Um, there's lots of them online. Evo and Summit are two good ones to just kind of start yeah. off with. If you have a specific game that you like, it might have its own tournament. Um, For sure. 
you can, if you have questions, you can email uh, muxel at gergenmuxel.com or gerg at gergenmuxel.com. That will get to either uh, me or Greg, respectively. Sure will. And, uh, Until next time.